Episode 14 You Look So Good The shock of being slapped by Olivia had drained Janet's energy. After the second slap, she stumbled backward and fell to the ground. Her makeup had been done exquisitely that day, and she was wearing an outfit that had been hand-selected by her stylist. It was the latest Burberry style that wasn't even available yet, and she had used Freddie's connections to buy it. Now, it was dirty and rumpled. Her makeup had rubbed off on the parts of her face where she had been slapped, revealing her bare skin underneath, which was mottled and uneven. Freddie reached down to help her up, but was shocked by her appearance. What happened to your face? He had only ever seen her made up and styled to perfection, and every time they had been intimate, she had asked to turn off the lights. At first, he thought she was shy, but now it turned out that without all the makeup, she wasn't as beautiful as he had thought. She quickly covered her face with her hands and exclaimed, Where's my bag? Where's my mirror and foundation? I need to fix my makeup. Lila laughed sarcastically. You dare to be a mistress when you... Turning to Freddy, she said, I thought you were just stupid, but now I realize that you must also be blind. Actually falling for this creature? Freddy was conflicted, watching Janet run away in such a sorry state covering her face as she stumbled, in a hurry to fix her makeup. Lila, what exactly are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do anything. I just can't stand to see you two hurting my friend. Olivia is kind and doesn't like conflict, but that doesn't mean she has no one to stand up for her. I'm telling you right now, keep that monster you're sleeping with under control. If she ever messes with Olivia again, don't expect me to just let it go. Lila looked fierce, and Freddie could tell that she meant what she said. More and more people had gathered to see what all the commotion was about. Olivia had had enough. She tugged on Lila's arm and said, Thank you for helping me vent my anger and for defending me, but I'd really like to get away from here now. Lila agreed, having satisfied her need for a scolding. Let's go. I'll introduce you to some famous actors. They left the crowd behind and went to a quiet area at the end of the deck. Lila laughed hard, doubling over, holding her belly. I can't stop laughing. Janet was humiliated, just like she deserves. Freddie's face turned green when he realized how much she's been deceiving him all this time. Olivia thought that Lila was being a little bit harsh, but she had to admit that she was feeling cheered up after what had just happened. Thank you, Lila. She hugged her. Thank you for standing up for me. I was so nervous, and I never know how to argue back and defend myself, so really, thank you. Lila's gaze softened, and she patted her friend's back to comfort her. Ever since we were kids, you've always endured everything on your own. You always push down your issues with people rather than face them. That's why you don't know how to fight for your own interests. You have to be more confident. Olivia thought for a moment. Mr. Sniper said the same thing. He told you to be more confident? Yes, more than once. Lila laughed. Well, that proves I'm not the only one who believes that. You're smart and pretty, and you're one of the kindest people I know. Who wouldn't like you? Well, Freddie, I guess. But he's the biggest idiot in the world. Olivia tilted her head and laughed. Revenge? feels really good. You're right. I might not be all that smart, but at least I'm a less awful person than her. Education isn't everything, okay? And it's not like you couldn't have gone to a good college back then. You were admitted to Bridgewater University. How many people across the country can say that? If it weren't for her, you would be a graduate of a top university right now. Olivia's heart warmed as she thought about how fortunate she was to have a friend that would stand up for her unconditionally. I know there's no need for things between us, and you don't like it when I say it either. But in the future, if you ever need anything, please tell me. If I can help in any way, I will. Lila put up her fists, like she was getting ready to knock out an opponent. I just don't like to see injustice. It's no big deal. Olivia laughed. You're pretty great. 
Why, thank you. The sea breeze blew her messy hair, revealing her delicate face and long neck. Olivia wasn't an overtly glamorous person. She was gentle and delicate, and her personality was humble and kind. Her makeover earlier had emphasized her elegance even more. Her flowy white dress, blown by the sea breeze, made her look ethereal. Lila was a little stunned looking at her. You're so beautiful. You're one of those women that looks good without makeup. But when you're dressed up, you're breathtaking. I like men. And even I'm a little tempted to kiss you. Olivia's cheeks flushed in embarrassment. She smiled faintly and tucked her hair, messed by the breeze, behind her ears. Oh, stop. Don't exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. You really look good. She looked at her from the top of her head to her feet. They talked for a while until they got hungry. Lila said, Wait for me here. I'll go get something for us to eat. Olivia watched her hurry away, and then she turned to face the deep blue sea under the starry night sky. She opened her arms and closed her eyes, savoring the refreshing sea breeze running through her hair. San Francisco was a coastal city, but all these years... She had constantly been so busy, earning money for Janet to study and live well, and then helping her mother-in-law with household chores. She hadn't had a chance to really experience the beauty of the ocean. She looked back at the shore. The lights were twinkling, and the scenery was spectacular. It was the time of the evening when workers and students were returning home, and families were gathering to have dinner, watch TV, and discuss their days home. She had no home now. If Mr. Sniper hadn't taken her in, she wouldn't even have a place to stay. Her phone buzzed in her purse. Is it him? She wondered. She had been so busy dealing with Freddie and Janet, she had forgotten the main purpose of her visit today. She opened her phone. Sure enough, the message was from him. Don't stand out in the breeze too long. You'll catch a cold. Olivia's hand trembled. She almost dropped her phone in the sea. He's really on the yacht. She bit her lower lip, not knowing what to reply. Her phone buzzed again. Do you want to see me? This time, she clenched her teeth and typed, Yes. The reply came quickly, Not yet. She'd been rejected, but she wasn't too disappointed. Hadn't she seen this coming from the start? He never turned the lights on and was always wearing a mask. It was obvious he didn't want to reveal himself. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come here. I won't do it again. She replied. No need to apologize. As I said, you'll never have to apologize to me. Olivia, I promise you that when the time comes, I will let you know who I really am. Okay. Olivia's phone went dark after a few seconds, but as she moved to put it back in her bag, another message came through. You look so beautiful today. Those five words gave Olivia a warm feeling as she read them. It was like his hot breath on her neck in the dark night. His sweet nothings whispered in her ear. She felt the heat rising in her cheeks. She was blushing. She quickly fanned herself with her hand, hoping the sea breeze would cool her. She didn't know why, but she felt a little troubled. Even though she had just been joking with Lila about it, those five words had made her nervous. Her fingers trembled slightly as she typed a response. Thank you. Before she could press send, his phone call came through. She answered. Hearing the sound of the sea breeze, and his shallow breathing on the other end before he spoke. Olivia. Yes? Don't dress like that anymore. Huh? She thought. Didn't he just say that I was beautiful today? Why has he changed his mind all of a sudden? Feeling a little embarrassed, she said, Am I so different today? Lila chose this outfit for me so it might not suit me so well. She has good taste. Mr. Sniper's voice was slightly hoarse. 
I didn't realize that you would be so beautiful in white. Olivia, try on some dresses for me when you get home tonight, hmm? Her face turned even more red. She looked around anxiously. Fortunately, no one was nearby to see her turning red from head to toe.